Disclaimer, I am not sponsored by nor am I affiliated with any of the companies mentioned in this video. All opinions represented are mine and mine alone. They do not represent anyone besides myself. Your opinions may differ. That's okay. Try this stuff out yourself in order to find out if it works for you. Hi everyone, it's me, Krista. Welcome back to my channel if you've been here before. If not, welcome for the very first time to my little art corner on YouTube. Today we are going to be opening up the Art Snacks box for March 2019 and seeing what's inside and kind of making a project with it. Without further ado, let's get into it. Just like any other month, we obviously got our little menu that tells us exactly what's inside and all the information that is necessary for the different products. Very cool. Also got our little sticker. This one's just a plain little Art Snacks logo, no special print, just the pencil in the shape of a pretzel. Mm -hmm. The snack I got is a Dum Dum in pineapple. I do like the fact that they give you a little sugar boost in every box. It's very nice to be able to create something. Gotta have a little bit of a energy going. Says the person who literally grabbed a Mountain Dew before this video. Also got a cute little official Art Snacks pin, which also has their logo on it. And obviously says official Art Snacks. Very cute. The first actual piece of art supplies that I have in this box is a King Art Inkline Fine Line Collar Ink Pen. It's normally $2.99 retail. Whether you're jotting down quick sketches on the go or creating outlines for a masterpiece, the King Art Inkline Fine Line Collar Ink Pen will never let you down. This reliable pen features archival waterproof ink and a durable, precise 0.45 millimeter tip. So it's going to be a pretty nice little fine tip there, which as you can see, it's pretty fine really little and looks like I got yellow. Don't know how well I can use yellow for outlines, but we'll just have to see. Got to think about it. And we got some Cran d'Ache Swiss wood pencils. Swiss wood, not Swiss wood, as in they are Swiss, made in Switzerland. They are $5.45 each retail for a single lead pencil. That seems like a pretty high price point for a normal pencil, especially just for one of them. But hey, I haven't tried them yet. Maybe they're the best damn pencils in the world. Who knows? Uh, these ones are a staff favorite, so apparently Art Snacks thinks they're worth the price, so that's good. Maybe. And the description says, experience the beauty of Switzerland's forest with these Swiss wood pencils from Caron d'Ache. You'll find two varieties in your box, one produced from dark beech wood and one from pine. Both pencils feature silky, super silky, HB graphite impressive point retention. If you sniff the tip of the dark beech wood, you'll get a whiff of brown sugar. So they're both the same lead hardness too. And the main difference between the two is the kind of wood that it's made from. And that one apparently smells like brown sugar. Um, I don't know if the wood it's made out of would necessarily make a difference for me purchasing pencils as an artist, but I'm sure it does to someone somewhere. And I kind of feel like the most important part is the lead, since that's the part you're actually using. Obviously, you don't want, like, super cheap wood, because it would break more often and split and then cause issues with the lead. You want it to be a pretty sturdy casing. But, like I said, as of right now, without using them, that just feels like really good marketing. Like you're going to get the experience of being out in the wild and you can smell the brown sugar from the one wood. Uh, if you have any opinions about that, let me know down below. Also let me know if you got a different color than yellow in the King Art Inkline Fine Line Color Ink Pen. I'm pretty sure they send different ones out. Yeah, just sound off and let me know what your thoughts are. 
let me know if I'm being too judgy too soon. Well, I guess we'll find out when I actually do draw something with it, but this seems excessive for pencils. Next, we have Royal Talon's Equaline Liquid Watercolor. It is $6.95 retail price. This is apparently a new and improved version of this product. Things are about to get intense. Royal Talon's Equaline Liquid Watercolor has a dye-based formula that lends extreme luminosity. The possibilities are endless with this watercolor for a few reasons. One, it's not waterproof when dry, so you can work on it further by rewetting. Number two, it has a very short drying time. Number three, you can decrease its intensity by thinning with water. Pair it with your new Equaline brush pen for a dynamic, creative experience. I do want to point out that the point of being able to decrease its intensity by thinning with water is normal for any watercolor or acrylic paint. You add water to dilute the intensity. You can also add opposite colors to dilute that intensity. And even with oil paint, to dilute the intensity of the pigment to thin it out, you can add paint thinner or oilless, odorless mineral spirits, not oilless, odorless mineral spirits. Uh, that just seems like a weird selling point to tack on to it because it's just a normal quality of pretty much any paint. Uh, I do like the fact it's blue. I am kind of excited to use it because I've been using a lot of silver ink in a couple of pieces I've been doing off camera. And I understand this is watercolor, not ink, but the dropper and some of the experience should be very similar. So it's blue. It looks like it might be a pretty color of blue, so we'll see that. I'm just a little confused as to why they are basically putting a normal quality of paint as like a bonus. Seems like some of the sales tactics are getting pretty uh, extraordinary here. Speaking of silver, looks like I might have gotten a silver brush pen. Go figure. So this is the Royal Talons Equaline Brush Pen, and it is normally for $25 retail price. Introducing Royal Talons Equaline Liquid Watercolor in pen form. Full of the same concentrated formula found in your new bottle, this brush pen has a brilliant, transparent color that will liven up your work. Artwork. Seamlessly transition from bottle to pen and make precise lines or energetic strokes. Dip the pen's tip directly into the bottle to experiment with gradation. Cool. So we got some blue and silver. Very nice. I don't know how I feel about it being a very transparent silver. I like stuff to be a little opaque and then to be able to kind of control it by diluting it with water. But we'll see. I haven't used it yet, so it could be pretty damn good. I just don't know yet. So we're just going to kind of do an overview of everything that came in this month's box. Except for the uh, sucker because I already ate it needed the sugar. So the King Art ink line pen is once again $2.99. These two are $5.45 each for pencils. The liquid watercolor that comes in a bottle is normally $6.95 and the brush pen is normally $4.25. So the total for the art supplies included in this box is about $25. The price for this Art Snacks box is $26 if you don't just pay up front and do the subscription that way. I don't do it that way, I do it month by month because I try to decide as I'm going if I want to keep going. I'm not gonna lie, so far, like some of the ideas in this box seem kind of fun. I'm trying to think of what I can use and make because of the colors right now. But we're going to kind of think about it a little bit more. So for paper, I'm going to be using the Stonehenge Aqua Hot Press paper. Because it is technically watercolor paper. It should be able to hold the stuff pretty well. I've been doing a couple projects on this paper. And so far, I'm really, really enjoying it. So let's just keep that going. And this is going to be 5 by 7 I didn't say that already. 
So we will be getting into that project soon. But before we get into doing that project, I want to share the joke of the month. What's a skeleton's favorite art form? Sculpture. So for the project for this month, I decided to do a little bit of fan art. Those pencils, the Crondosh ones, aren't really that different than any other HB pencil I've ever bought or used, honestly. And almost $6 does seem kind of excessive to me for something like that, honestly. I feel like the most I've ever spent on an individual pencil that wasn't a mechanical pencil that included lead was like $2. That's it. They don't seem to work any differently. They don't seem to be any smoother. They did stay sharpened longer, I guess. I didn't have to sharpen it during the entire project, so I mean, that's a positive right there. And as a reminder, anytime you're using watercolor or ink, you should really use some painter's tape to tape down the edges to try to help prevent curling. I actually remembered to do that for this one. Sometimes I don't, and usually that's also to kind of test the paper and see how much water the paper can actually handle without it warping at all. Because I got that blue and yellow, I decided to do a drawing of Sailor Moon, but in my style, not in a traditional anime or manga style. I end up using the pencils a lot to be able to get some depth in. At this stage of the drawing, in the planning and sketching stage, I still thought that that gray was silver. So I was thinking I would be able to use the silver, or what I thought was silver, as highlights. So I end up putting just a wash of that blue straight down over the whole piece after I get a little bit of shading and a little bit of the yellow in. I always have to do adjusting in pretty much any project I take on as I go. That just tends to be how I work. But with this one, there seemed to be a lot more pivoting than even a normal piece. Like I said, I applied that blue watercolor with a big watercolor brush I have. I did dilute it with water, obviously, because that's kind of what you do. Usually don't use watercolor straight. I tried doing like little splatters and stuff to see how it would work and I'm using my trick of using a hair dryer to kind of dry it pretty quickly and feeling it with my hand to see how it is. I didn't get a lot of differentiation with the watercolor while it was still wet with trying to do like little flecks and some little brush flips and stuff. And right here is when I'm realizing that is gray, not silver. Oh no. I just ended up kind of using that gray for a little bit of extra shading later on. Honestly, for most of this, I, like I said earlier, use the pencil for shading. I will say that the watercolor did layer pretty well, and using that over the watercolor marker, I was able to blend out that gray a little bit better and get a smoother transition. So. That was nice. They do play well together. And they were right that watercolor, when you add a little bit of water on it when it's dry, it can lift it up. So you can get some good effects doing it that way. I made her look so serious. She's not a serious character at all, especially not in the original versions. I haven't seen any of the newer anime or anything like that. I just have a bunch of the manga from when I was in like middle school. And the anime, I have some subtitle version of the original whole series, basically. But she's in that such a lighthearted, not at all serious character, and I made her look kind of angry and pensive here, but oh well, she still ends up turning out pretty well, despite everything. <laughs> 
I end up using the yellow liner marker to do a lot of the hair and then to get some accents later on. And with the pencil marks, I'm just doing really loose, sketchy, not super smooth shading or taking a lot of time doing the shading, honestly. I thought with uh, this piece specifically, doing a looser kind of style was going to work a lot better than trying to make it super duper smooth and realistic looking. With the pencils too, I do actually have a problem with getting the exact same lead hardness for both pencils. I understand that the outside wood is different, but that doesn't really affect how the pencil itself works. It's smelling different or smelling like brown sugar doesn't really matter to me at all because literally if I wanted it to a pencil to smell like brown sugar, I could roll it in brown sugar or just get out some brown sugar and snip it, honestly. I would have much preferred to get a different hardness of lead or maybe another color of watercolor, maybe a white, maybe a black marker, just something, anything else other than two of the exact same lead hardness graphite pencils. They could have honestly just switched off like who got which outside wood for the lead pencil. Like they do with colors, how they'll switch that out and like I might get different colors than you get and vice versa. They could have done that with the lead hardness or even just the wood casing. It's just, it's silly. It seems silly to me. I just really think that this piece could have benefited with having a darker element or a lighter element just for more contrast purposes. It is partially my fault because I did use the blue as just a wash. I didn't leave any white on the actual paper. I do remedy that later by bringing in a Faber-Castell Pitt's Artist pen in white, which came in last month's Art Snacks box, so at least I am staying within the boxes, just pulling from a different month. And it did have the added benefit of using that marker over something that wasn't pastel. I actually got to get a better feel for how opaque that white marker is and how it can work with other media like watercolor and mark and just regular marker. It works much better than it does against chalk pastel. Go figure. Because without that white marker, you can see it just looks really, really flat. And you'll see here pretty soon that bringing that in helps a lot with how this looks. That added little bit of contrast just helps this piece that much more. But we are getting close to the end of this drawing, so I am going to kind of share my final thoughts on everything. The King Art Inkline Fine Line Collar Ink Pen, I liked it. I thought the yellow worked pretty well. It showed up pretty well against both the pencil and the blue watercolor. The Caran d'Ache Swiss wood pencils, I'm not going to spend $6 on those. I don't think they're anything that super special. The Royal Talons Equaline liquid watercolor, liked it. I thought it was a very pretty color. Worked like a lot of other watercolors I've used before. Pretty good. The Eco Lion brush pen, uh, since it's gray, it seemed like it mixed with the blue pretty well. I think you could definitely get a little bit of shading by mixing the two. I think you guys should try what it said about dipping the marker into the watercolor well, because I kind of want to know how that works, and I didn't do that. So if you've done that, let me know down below if you liked it. 
I'm not gonna lie, this wasn't my favorite box. It wasn't my favorite project. It just feels like the past couple of Art Snacks ones have bummed me out a little bit. I just don't know. I don't know if this one, if it was the colors I got or if it's just that the getting two of the same exact hardness of pencil bothers me that much. It might be that, honestly. But I did get a good project with it. I like some of the products in here pretty well. I also just realized that they gave us watercolor without a brush to use. So there's that. You definitely have to pull outside stuff in order to use the stuff in this box too. Just as a friendly reminder there. But let's get this video over with. If you liked this video, please hit that like button. If you have any comments, questions, feelings, concerns, if you got this box and you got different colors, if you really like the stuff in here, if you really liked that brown sugar smell to the one pencil, let me know in the comments down below. I've been doing little reviews of the Art Snacks boxes about once a month, so if you want to see more videos like this or you want to hear me just ramble about art stuff, please hit that subscribe button. Thank you so much for your time and hope you have a great rest of your day or night, depending on when you're watching this.